Hey everyone, I have a highly anticipated tutorial for you. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an epic sports edit using Adobe After Effects. Believe it or not, this overall edit is pretty simple. We're gonna take a freeze frame from our footage, add some flare using ink bleeds, and offset them to give our edit more variance. The assets I'm using for today's tutorial are from Envato Elements. One subscription gets you unlimited downloads. They aren't a sponsor, but I do have an affiliate link below if you'd like to check out their plans for yourself. The footage I'm using is from the Premier Lacrosse League from their PLL Day Initiative. You can also use footage you find or shoot in your own to pull off the same effect. Now it's time to get started. All right, so we're in After Effects here, and what we wanna do going through this clip is find the actual frame that we wanna freeze and work on. So I'm going through here, and I know that he's gonna be shooting, and I wanna find a frame right before he actually takes the shot. So I feel like this frame is the frame to, that we wanna work with. So what I'm gonna do is actually press my asterisk key on my number pad to leave a marker. Next thing I'm gonna do is split this clip with Control shift d duplicate our first layer, right click, time, freeze frame. And then now we can drag things across here. So now we see how this is gonna play out. And what I wanna do from here is actually extend the duration of this freeze frame clip. So I know it starts at 116 here. So I wanna give it at least two seconds right here to 316. So next thing I wanna do is right click on this clip, call it working comp, jump in here, and then trim our comp to our work area. So this is the frame where we're gonna be doing all of our work. And the first thing we need to do is actually mask out our player to separate him from the background. So what I'm gonna be doing is duplicating our clip here. I'm gonna stay highlighted on our clip and then I have my pen tool selected. And we're going to create a mask around him. And I'm gonna make our composition box just a little bit larger so it's easier to see. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be pretty close. And if you're unfamiliar with the pen tool, this is a great exercise to, to get pretty good at it. And what I'm gonna do from here is just fast forward through this process so you don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again. All right, so we have our player mask out. So now what I'm gonna do is just show you what we have. So we have our player here and then we have our background. I'm gonna give him a light feather of like, let's say three, just so he's slightly feathered out here and he looks good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create our outline. So in order to do that, I'm going to duplicate our player. I'm gonna call this player outline. I'm going to add a fill effect and then I'm going to change that fill to white. And when I drop it below our player, nothing's changed yet, but stick with me. I'm gonna pull up my mask tool here, and then I'm going to increase our mask expansion. And now you could see this come to life right here. Now we have our player outline. And the cool thing about this is, you know, because we added a fill, we could change it to any color that we want. We could keep it like maybe like the orange that's, that's on their team. I'm gonna keep it to white. I just like the way this looks, but feel free to get crazy with it. So before we jump further into this design, I'm actually gonna be working on some of our assets. So we have right here this cement floor texture, and I'm just gonna create a new composition and call this animated texture. We'll make it one second long. And I'm gonna bring this texture in here and what I'm gonna do is animate the scale, position, and rotation here. And I'm gonna go up eight frames. I'm gonna drag this to the end here. I'm going to click on all of our keyframes, right click, toggle hold keyframe. All right, so this is a really quick and dirty way on how to animate a texture. If you wanna know how to do this further, I have another tutorial that I'll link that goes into more detail about this process. So we're gonna jump back into our working composition here. Now we're going to pull up our ink bleeds and what our ink bleeds are gonna do is they are actually going to reveal our animated texture. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have our ink bleeds here and I have a ton that I got from Envato Elements here that came in a whole pack, which was really nice. And I'm just going to pull this in here and we see right where the starting point is, is right there. So I'm gonna trim this down with my Alt in bracket. And then we see that it goes beyond the duration of the actual composition itself, but that's what we want. We want these ink bleeds to keep growing. We don't want them to stop for the effect we're trying to pull off today. However, this looks a little small. So I'm gonna scale this up here a good bit. All right, that looks good. Scale down just a little bit. Now I wanna find another ink bleed. Let's say, let's try number five. 
All right, so this is another one. Again, I'm just gonna trim off the front. Get it in here, see how this looks. Say, okay, I see where this is going. I'm gonna fill in another part of the frame. And ideally what I'm trying to do is fill up the entire frame with black. So I know by the end of my composition that like most of the side, this entire side here is gonna be black. And then at this point, that's gonna be black. So I'm just filling in the parts with the ink bleeds that I want to fill with our animated textures. So we have our right side down here, then we have our top and part of our bottom right here. And I could just drop our opacity to kind of see where things are gonna be overlapping. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. I still need to get a few more. So maybe I'll just bring in six here, see what this looks like. Ooh, this takes up a lot of space. I like this. I'm gonna make this even larger. And we'll actually cover the whole frame with this one. This way, if we have any white edges or anything like that, we know for certain that it'll be covered with this last texture. Now, another thing that's important is that I trimmed off the first two right here to have them start right when the start of this frame hits, but I'm actually going to adjust their timing slightly. So I'm gonna have this ink bleed come in first, and then this ink bleed's gonna come in right after. And then this third one, I want this to animate in, let's say, like right, maybe like right around here. So now what we're gonna do is take our animated texture and we're gonna work on one ink bleed at a time just so we can stay consistent here. So I'm gonna work with this one first. And I'm gonna bring in our animated texture. I need to right click our animated texture, enable time remapping, go to our last frame, click page up, set a keyframe, delete our last keyframe, alt click the stopwatch, and type in loop out. Again, this is part of that texture tutorial I was talking about that I will link. Now I have my animated texture and it's looping out. So now I'm going to do a luma matte invert. And basically what, what I'm doing is we have white and black information here. If I were to do a luma matte, I would want all of the white information to show and the black information to hide everything. But I wanna do the reverse, the inverted. So I wanna actually show the opposite. So to do that, I'm going to mat my animated texture to our ink bleed and I'm gonna click our Luma matte switch. So now you see what was white before. I'm going to invert that. Now we can see what was black. And here's where we're at. Of course, our player and player outline will be above. Give these a fun little color just so they stand out a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate our texture. All right, and I'm going to go below ink five and I'm going to do the same thing. So now it's coming in more. All right, and then lastly, what I'm going to do is duplicate our animated texture again, and then do the same thing to our third ink bleed. Now keep in mind, it's gonna start at a full screen because it's not uh, matting to any information. So what I need to do is just drag this down here. I wanna make sure that the clip is in line with the clip that it's actually matting. So let's say you fix that here. So we have our reveal and we see how our cemented texture is going to be animated in, but now we need to add some color and bring some life to this. So I'll show you how that's done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to our first animated texture here, and I'm going to add a hue and saturation. I'm going to click colorize, and I'm going to play around with the colors here. I know what colors I want, but if you don't, I encourage you to just kind of toggle through this and decide what color looks best for you. So now we're gonna start off with this dark blue here. We see how that's looking, that's looking pretty cool. All right, now we're going to add another hue saturation to our second cement texture. And what I'm gonna do here is put in a similar value, but I'm going to mix it up slightly. And we'll do, say, negative 50. All right, so now we have a dark blue, a light blue, but we need that orange. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add a third hue and saturation. And this is a really fun effect because as you see here, I could really get to any kind of color that I want. I can change the saturation of it and the actual overall lightness of the color itself too. So this is a really fun, crazy effect. And I love putting it on textures because we still see the texture as opposed to a fill where it makes it look like a flat shaped layer. So that's the reason I'm adding the hue and saturation effect to this. So with this last one, I'm just gonna change this number to 15. I'm gonna change this one to 59 and our lightness to negative 28. Awesome. So here's what we have. So I like the way everything's looking, but I actually want to extend the duration of our composition a little bit to let's say three and a half seconds, just to give us a little bit more to work with. So I'm going to extend everything out here. 
So now what we're gonna do is work on our actual name callout. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is go to our paper cutout here, and I'm going to bring this into a new composition. And we're gonna create our animated text, and then we're gonna bring this into our working comp and then reveal it with an ink bleed again. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is write out the player's name, Tom Schreiber. Center this up here with our align tool. I know he is number 26, so I'm just gonna duplicate this, put number 26 above. Awesome. Bring this up a bit. All right, so here's the layout of it. Now we actually need to add some subtle tracking animation. So I'm going to drop down my menu here, go to animate, add tracking, put a keyframe for tracking amount, and bring it up here. All right, I like the way that looks. So next thing I'm gonna be doing is actually copying and pasting this animator to our number, but rather than doing the same tracking where it goes out, I'm going to reverse these keyframes so this actually animates in together. So now we have our animation, it looks good, and we're gonna call this name call out. We're gonna go back to our working composition here. We're gonna bring our name call out in. Let's put it like right here, but let's put it below the player outline. Ooh, that looks nice. Love that. So now we're gonna reveal the name callout. I know I wanna use ink 19, so I'm gonna just bring this into its own composition. So this ink bleed animates from the top. I want ours to animate from the bottom, so I'm gonna flip our rotation to 180 degrees. Now I'm going to right click, time, enable time remapping. This is a pretty long clip, so I wanna bring this down to like here, so it animates in really fast, just like that. We could even go faster. Now I wanna highlight these keyframes here, F9 for easy ease, jump in the graph editor and extend our handle so it's gonna start off really fast and then ramp down in terms of speed. Here's what we have, love that. Now don't worry that the whole frame isn't black, we're gonna be using just this section right here of the actual mat, so we're in good shape here. And I'm gonna call this ink 19 sped up just so we know what it is. We'll go back to our working composition here. I'm gonna bring in our ink. And I'm going to change our name call out to purple. Just to stay organized, I'm gonna scale down our ink bleed here. Drop down our opacity just to see, okay, where does it get fully black? Right there, okay, cool. I like that. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna bring our opacity back to 100. I'm gonna do the same Luma invert callout that we did earlier. So I'm going to map this to our ink bleed here, switch it to Luma and then invert it. So here's what we have. And it animates in just like that, which looks really cool. But I wanna take this a step further and add just a little bit of pizzazz. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate these clips, bring these below, and I'm gonna make these orange just so we know what they are, that there are different clips, different callouts. So with this first name callout, what I'm actually going to do is take our hue and saturation from earlier on this bottom animated texture and I'm going to paste it here. So now we have this little cool little offset effect where it starts to animate in with this orange look followed by the actual paper that we want. So this is a really cool little trick in terms of offsetting keyframes. It's currently offset by two keyframes. We could see what it looks like with one. I love that, that looks so cool. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is bring in another asset. So I have this old film grain right here. Really simple, I'm going to bring this on top of everything. Here, scale it down to right here. And then I'm gonna change the blend mode to soft light. So here's what we have. And it definitely lightens up the entire design, but I like these lighter colors. They look a little bit more pastel-y, so I'm okay with that. All right, so there's only a little bit left to go. So now what we're gonna do is add a null layer. So go to layer, new, null object, and we are going to call this scale. And what we're gonna do is take everything we have in here, and we're going to parent it to our null layer here. And then we are going to create a keyframe for the beginning and go up to, let's say, 105. So it has a slight little push right when it animates in like this. So now when we jump back into a render comp, here's what we have. 
and that looks sweet. But there's one last thing we need to add, and that's our flash, and that's really simple. So I'm gonna click Control Y to create a solid layer here, and I'm gonna change our color to this orange color. I'll make it even just a little bit more orangey, a little bit lighter. Now what I'm gonna do is actually trim our layer down and then start creating some keyframes for our opacity. So I'm gonna go up four, set another keyframe, another four, bring that back to zero, bring this first one to zero. On our last keyframe, we're gonna just trim that off, align that up. So then by the time it's at 100%, it's gonna be completely covered. Change this to easy ease here. Duplicate this, press U, and do the same alignment right here. So this is how you make a dope sports edit using After Effects. Drop a comment to let me know what you think about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.